We're Sydney and Mandy, and back in January, we sold our house to live in our brand new Brinkley RV full time on the road. Fast forward to April 1st when we officially hit the road, eager to start our adventures, but what we didn't realize is that we were gonna be moving way too fast. As a result, our RV took a beating and what's known as shakedown, and boy, did things break. A lot of things. Today, we're taking you behind the scenes of what it's really like to put a new RV through a shakedown. From the mountains of Yellowstone, across South Dakota, back to Colorado, and all the way east, this is the story of everything that went wrong with our Brinkley Z3100 during our whirlwind summer. For those of you who are new here, welcome. Our trouble started early back in Strawberry Bay in Utah when we discovered out boondocking that our converter was not lithium compatible. And while Brinkley was great and easy to work with, we actually haven't had the opportunity to switch that out yet. We'll be doing that this winter when we settle down, but trust us, that list of things to do this winter is long. From water leaks to a fireplace malfunction, a hitch failure, and even a problem with our auto leveling system, this episode is all about the mishaps that we've had and what we've learned about it. Stick around as we piece together the highs and the lows of life on the road during our crazy shakedown trip. This is my pity party. I'm gonna cry all night. So if you've been watching for a while, you saw us discover a water leak in our underbelly on a travel day. And quite frankly, we never really filled you in on what was happening there because we, it took so long to figure it out. So when we were leaving West Yellowstone and we had that leak driven from this uh, door here, it's coming from the Nautilus system. There's some kind of like overflow tray and then this pipe that's supposed to come out this hole. Well, it got disconnected and then it was flooding the bottom and dripping down here, but it wasn't a lot of water. I was able to drain everything out of that overflow system, but I can't get the pipe to come through this hole. It like barely reaches, but plus it doesn't fit. So thankfully where we're staying, they have a full service RV tech, RV repair. So I'm gonna to talk to them tomorrow um, to find out maybe why that Nautilus backflow is flooding over, as well as maybe a piece that I can add to this or what I can do to get this re-threaded through so any overflow does just drip out. This is the blue and white hex pipe. You see coming down the blue and white one. And that's where the overflow drain of the Nautilus system, and you can see right here it just didn't quite fit so we're gonna try to get that piece right in there together step one we got that in there so now we've got the blue pipe going into the white thing and the white thing sticking through and then it hangs out the bottom. My shoulders were a little broad to get up in here. Yeah, I needed both arms up in there. We got it done, so I think it's in there. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of work the Nautilus knobs. Um, potentially something's in there and it's not getting sealed when we're flipping it all the way. Um, and then we're gonna go back to using the water and I'm gonna wash this. Uh, the good news is if it drips, at least it won't be dripping. Um, and coming out through the underbelly, it'll just exit this pipe. So um, I think we got a short-term solution figured out. After crawling back in there and after further investigation, I realized that the water leak was coming from the retractable hose. So like we said, Brinkley has been super easy and phenomenal to work with. They'll be sending us a new water hose when we get to our landing spot this winter here in a couple weeks. In addition to sending us a new water hose, they're actually going to be sending us a brand new fireplace because we woke up one morning shortly after the water leak and it was freezing in here. We kept getting the error code E3, which means it's overheating. Called Brinkley, what we had to do to be able to get it through the manufacturer warranty was get behind it, take a picture, make sure it wasn't caused by dust. It wasn't. And they're going to send us a new one. We've also had just a few small, minor, more cosmetic issues. We had this board fall out of under the drawer under the counter one day on travel day. Our, the coating in our sink is chipping and we had this o-ring cap just go missing. 
And for those of you who spent 4th of July weekend with us in Yellowstone, you saw that when I went to go wash my hands and I couldn't get any water, it was actually because our control panel just decided it didn't want to work that day. We ultimately ended up cutting power completely to the rig, gave it a few minutes and did a reset and it came back on and has worked perfectly ever since. But it is still something we're keeping an eye on since, you know, it seems to have a mood. Under the bathroom sink is the check valve for the black tank flush. We've had to replace this twice now. And as you can see, we have some towels in there just in case. Sometimes it's just like a small pin drop leak. As you saw when this happened the first time back when we were in Phoenix, it was leaking enough. It went all the way in and we had a puddle on our stuff down in the basement. Have you ever woken up on a cold morning ready to take a nice hot shower, but the water just wouldn't get hot? Well, that's pretty much every morning for us these days. For some reason, even though we have plenty of propane, we keep getting an E1 error, which is the code for no propane. All you have to do is shut the water off and turn it back on, give the water heater a minute to reset, but clearly that's getting ready to die on us. And when you do have hot water and you create all that steam, well, it has to be vented out. And sometimes the max air fan in the bathroom well, it gets one of those moods and it just decides that it doesn't want to work or open. It does seem to be related to humidity, uh, so we're still working on figuring that one out. As we were prepping to hit the road for the first time in April coming out of Phoenix, we got our first recall notice. It was a simple fix. They actually sent me the parts and the instructions and we were able to get a mobile tech to come out to our RV site. We got up on the roof. It was our attic vents. The sealant that they used wasn't compatible and there were some cracks with some attic vents. Thankfully, we had no cracks when we went up there, took off the sealant, cleaned it, resealed it, and we were good to go. Since then, we got another recall notice. This one's a little bit bigger, a little bit more serious. It's gonna take three to five hours to get done and we have to be on a concrete site. Our recall is on the wiring harness that's going to the fridge. So they have to rerun that, pull the fridge out, as well as drop the underbelly, drill some holes in the frame. So this is something that we've added to our winter list. And don't worry, we're gonna bring you along when we have the RV tech come out to the site and tie up all these loose ends, as well as the big recall project. The scariest mishap we faced all summer for me was 100% the hitch. We haven't really talked to you guys much about this, but our hitch has been giving us trouble since day one. We talked a little bit how it took us multiple times and helper to get hitched. But let's talk about when we were trying to leave Kurt Gowdy State Park. We're sitting on the back of the tailgate at a blue compass because we're in Wyoming. We're in Cheyenne, Wyoming. We were supposed to be in Granby, Colorado. And why are we just sitting on the back of the tailgate? We are supposed to check out yesterday and we started hitching at 10 and our hitch would not latch and lock in. That it, The kinkman would not hit the trigger and we couldn't get hitched. And after two hours and several hours on the phone, we had to call it and book an extra night. Yeah, so luckily the spot we were in at the state park where we're boondocking um, was available for one more night. Um, we're, you know, we're in a tight situation in regards to water, black tank, etc. So, you know, Good this morning. People Not need showered. <laughs> People need a shower around here and put on fresh clothes. Yeah, um, but Blue Compass is doing everything within their power. Yesterday they ordered the parts that we needed, replacement from Reese. Reese has been a nightmare to work with. I have nothing but negative things to say about them, so I'm going to move on. Uh, but Blue Compass is a camping world. Oh man, good things. So nice. So we talked to them yesterday. They could order the replacement head for the hitch have it here by today so we're waiting on the truck and only shows up in the morning so we got here at 8 30 a.m they don't even open till nine and we're just waiting on the truck and the tech guys as soon as the truck pulls up they're ready to jump in and get our job done and so the reality is is that our hitch has never performed properly even that first day with adam he had to like jam it in once we hitched and everything properly and we thought, okay, like we're new, it needs to be lubricated properly, maybe we're doing something wrong, maybe we're too high, too low, we tried everything. Well, so I've been on the phone multiple times with Reese, oh, well, Horizon Global, whatever their manufacturer is called, a couple times over the last several weeks, and they basically said like, oh, you're not lubing it enough. So I like got in there, worked the lube in, did every, like, no, there's 0% chance it's user error at this point, I'm confident. 
So the rig is ready, slides are in, everything's ready with the rig. So as soon as we get back with the new hitch, we're ready to hitch up and head the other direction to Laramie to dump and then down to Colorado. It went green! Greeny beanie! Yeah. We got it, baby. How you feel? You're a tough cookie. It's ready. Let's was, do our walk arounds. Let's not forget anything with all the nerves. Let's do our checks. You did awesome. Reese concluded that it was a faulty hitch. We'll later learn that that's incorrect. But because Reese said it was a faulty hitch, Blue Compass said, you know what? We'll replace it on us. They installed it free, no of charge. They said, we'll deal with Reese on the back end. We just want you guys to be safe. And for that, I was so grateful. But then a few weeks later, we ran into trouble all over again. For the first three times that we hitched with the new hitch head, perfect. It looks great. I mean, it's never been that smooth, I'll tell you that. It's like, oh, that's what it was supposed to do. Oh my God, I'm so grateful. And just when we thought our hitch issues were behind us, we went to hitch and I saw her face oh in my. the mirror. <laughs> and I was like, and she's like, have these. It did it again where we got the half green, half red and we were right back to where we were before. The hitch would not click in. So we called, we were just outside of Kansas City. We called another Blue Compass, again, third Blue Compass in a row. They could not have been more helpful and like just kind generally. It was all hands on deck. One thing that we did not film because stakes were high, there were five men behind the truck <laughs> backing her into a solitude that was on the lot. They wanted to practice after they did their troubleshooting. So they, this is a funny, so there's like, I'm not joking, there's five men behind the truck saying, you're good, come on back, come on back. And so I'm just kind of like, there's too many like chefs in the kitchen. I'm just standing there and kind of observing like quietly, like she's the, you know, she was in reverse and she gets out of the truck and she's like, I only listen to my wife. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, okay. So pressure's on. So like, I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Um, yeah, looks good. Like, come on. I was like trying to make eye contact with her. I'm like, you need to tell me when I come back up. Like, I don't know what they're looking at. <laughs> So anyways, we hitched to this solitude three or four times. Boom, boom, boom. I have never seen our hitch work so smoothly. And later that night as I was laying in bed and I was thinking about that experience and I knew travel day was a couple days away. We had to get this figured out so we could travel. When we go to hitch tomorrow, I have a feeling we're gonna have the same issue because we did before. We know it's not the hitch. We hitched it up to a solitude on the lot many times over and over and over. The hitch works great. But I have a theory about what it is, and well, we're gonna test that theory tomorrow, so stick around. It'll be here like that. Okay guys, it's really windy out here and the truck is running, so I hope you can hear me. We are gonna attempt to hitch. I have a problem, it's, I have a hunch we're going to have a problem. Um, but before I assume that I know what I'm talking about and how to fix it, let's make sure we actually have a problem. Pretty sure it is because of that skid plate, so we are going to test that theory right now. Couldn't put that pin in there to lock the jaws. 
So even the jaws looked tight and secure around the pin, they were not able to be locked and that's where the real danger was. Um, but I do think we've just found the long-term solution to what's been going on. I would love to know, I researched what the best lube is for the, the face of the pitch plate and then the pin box where they're gonna be a lot of metal on metal. I used white lithium grease today. That's actually a heavily debated topic online, so I'd be curious if your guys' opinions, like what type of lubricant do you use on your hitch where the pin box and the face plate of the hitch meet, where there's lots of friction. So since then, we've had three travel days with a flawless hitching process without the lube plate. So we're pretty sure that solved the issue. The last major issue that we had during our shakedown trip was with our auto level. The scariest thing that has ever happened in our V life happened yesterday. Of course the camera wasn't rolling. We're gonna have to relive the scenario today so the camera will be rolling for you guys, I promise. Hopefully though, it never happens again. I hit the auto level button on the Brinkley and one of the front jacks came off the ground and the other one, I think it was just gonna go as high as it could possibly go. Like it was already way way too high like and on one jack and i like i'm scrambling shut it off bring it manually down it's not coming down luckily we had some issues with our luckily luckily we had some issues with our auto level system the last travel day um we ended up having to call the dealership they sent us to rv complete rv complete was a joke don't waste your time uh google though our the dealership did let us know what needed to be done was resetting the lippert component control system component and so we were then just able to go to youtube we were able to youtube that <laughs> that was a google and youtube combination a go <laughs> that's our new word now okay so i was able to google that and watch a youtube video on how to do that so i knew how to manually override the lipper system which is super easy you shut the whole system off you hit the front button five times, you hit the rear button five times, you'll hear a blink, and then you'll be able to manually move each leg until you can manually level it. I don't know why the air goes, until you can manually level it. And then you hit enter and that resets your zero point. Um, so I was able to do that and fix it and luckily the rig did not tip over, but oh, she was leaning. Whoo, it was scary. Okay, so truck is disconnected from the rig and everything, all I should have to do is push auto level, so. Okay, let's wash the jacks. Okay, that worked perfectly. That last site that we were at, not only did we feel unsafe, but it was the least level site we've ever been in, and I'm assuming that's what caused the issue. Uh, Cause when we pulled in, Greg was really leaning. So now I'm gonna see if calibrated it if it was actually level. Slightly lean this way but not as bad as it's been in the past. We'll bring the right side down a hair. Let's check it from the That's the most level it's ever been from the auto level. So that's that's a win. We have to bring the nose up. That we can do. Okay. Thankfully, after that second auto level emergency, that one really was an intense situation. I knew how to reset it and I have since fixed it and recalibrated it. It does seem to be working properly. We've auto leveled just a couple of times since then. So we will for sure keep you guys updated if we have any other troubles in regards to the auto level system. I will say this about all of the issues that we have had over this first year. You know, we've gotten a lot of comments from people who are frustrated with their own RV situations who are like, oh, you know, when you pay so much, you should never have anything break. I don't think we had a single issue really, other than maybe the fireplace, and that's just the manufacturer of the fireplace, that's not a Brinkley issue. Everything seemed very vibration related to me mm -hmm. for the most part. I mean, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and when you are driving down the road and you <laughs> hit those potholes, like, 
<laughs> or the worst I think are like the heat heaves out west. Yeah. Like, like the road like, just melted and then rehardened. <laughs> to me, there's like no, you, like she said, everything's kind of related to vibration. So it's been no real shocker kind of, of what happened. I mean, even with the water, you know, part of that water leak situation, part of it had to do with that of, of moving. So I mean, you're moving yeah. your home, you're moving your RV. Yeah, I think in that case that hose was cut just to fit and then it vibrated up and into the yeah. underbelly. <laughs> but the actual hose shouldn't be leaking, but it should have well, flooded yeah. the underbelly. So what we're trying to say is that none of this was a really big deal. If you guys have been following us, you know that we did an online version of RV technician school before we hit the road because we fully expected problems like these. Yeah, and that was helpful because that alone helped me understand what a converter is. <laughs> yeah, like a word I would have not like, like understood. To know, I mean, when that issue happened, I still didn't know where it was located or what it <laughs> yeah. looked like, but I did know what it did um, mm -hmm. and that that had to be where the trouble was. So just having a little bit better understanding of some of those things are more RV specific um, different from your home. Yeah. And what I really would say is that what we've learned over this shakedown period was that being handy is an absolute requirement in the RV life. And if you're somebody like us who is looking into getting into towing a rig with absolutely no experience and being handy and working on your own rig and all those things and learning those first time things for the first time, do not be intimidated. It's really all about your mindset, I think. Because the hikes we've gone on, the views, the water trips, the kayaking, canoeing, zip lining. Because all of the fun things outweigh the troubles and the issues and fixing things. And it's totally worth it. So if you're thinking about this lifestyle or even just camping on the weekends or part-timing, just know it's part of the RV process and going in with a good attitude makes it doable. Yeah, and I would remind you that in your life right now, if you're not RVing and you think like, oh, stuff's gonna break so I don't wanna RV, I promise you there's things going wrong in your everyday life, no matter who you are, no matter what lifestyle you're living. So, you know, it's, it's really all how you look at it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today and learning about all the shakedown issues that we had. We appreciate your viewership and your support so much. We are on the verge of a thousand, so if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It means the world to us. It helps the channel grow. All those likes, comments, subscribes, we could not be more grateful. And if you want a full tour of our rig, check out this episode. And hit that notification bell and join us next Thursday as we head to Colorado for the Brinkley Owners Meetup. Thanks so much for watching. This is my piece.